I guess we're ready to go if you are. Uh, what a great crowd tonight. I'm delighted to have so many people here. Um, I think first we're going to have a slideshow, and uh, we will have to have a ton of new people to identify some people because we don't know all the scene. We think we'll try to muddle through that one, and then uh, we'll have a panel after that. Before we do that, though, uh, Randy Bennett has some announcements he wants to make. So, yeah, just quickly, um, we've got an area exhibit next door that some of you probably have already seen up on the second floor of the Robinson House, and. Uh, to tell you the truth, Dan and I would like to leave it up so we don't have to work up another exhibit in that room. But I also <laughs> thought of people coming in from Sunny Risk Ski Area, and there'll be a lot of visitors this winter that would like to see it and haven't had a chance to. So that exhibit will stay up until May of 2005, and we'll be adding some things to it. For six, six. 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 I'm getting seen on it, right? Uh, in the back of the room, we've got two new display cases, and these are the plexiglass. Uh, Cubes, a rectangle with a quilt in it. These are the gift, uh, 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 gift to the society uh, in honor of Ted and Jeanette Areno. And some of you may know the Arenos. They have a cottage up on uh, Lower Richardson, and they are also responsible for reprinting the Richardson Lakes history, uh, and which is now on the print again. And that's it. So if anyone's interested in a copy, now is time to get one. Uh, the larger case contains. A uh, very interesting item. This is the most recent acquisition of the Society's collection. This is a great 19th century autographed quilt that for years and years was stored in the attic of the Bean House, the old Riley Bean House, uh, which was unfortunately demolished uh, a short while ago. And uh, it was made in the Sunday River Valley. And if you go up later on, you can tell it's got names of people that lived in the Sunday River Valley. And we'll be doing some more research, but there are Bennett's and Frost. And there are also a few Bethel people, Hattie Harris, John Harris. And the names are actually, it looks like they're stamped on the centers uh, of the squares. So that's an interesting item. That's the gift of Pat Carter, uh, whose mother, of course, Frances Gunther, was a bean. Uh, the uh, other nurry related item that's recently been uh, received by the Society, very interesting, is an antique switchboard, a telephone switchboard. And we have Susan to thank for this comes from the Sunday River Ski Resort, and the, we're doing some research, and Susan's been helping a lot on this, checking around, trying to find something more about the history of the switchboard. Apparently it was used uh, internally for calling around at the ski area, at least used back in the early 1970s. So the switchboard looks like it goes back to the 1930s and 1940s. And that's currently in storage next door, but that will be out on display uh, as well. And I thought it was kind of neat, there's a little label on the switchboard, and it said, uh, uh, Ski Patrol 7 Long. Uh, so that, that takes us back a ways. But anyway, so we're very glad to have that. So one more, one more Nuri item. Those are my announcements. So one of the great icons of Nuri, and when you think of Nuri, we think of the artist bridge. And we also, uh, for long years, the Bear Grange was a, and still is a major part of, uh, of uh, Nuri. It still uh, exists in name, at least, and here it is, uh, a premium, probably from the, uh, does it say there? I don't think it says on the uh, city date there, but it's a premium list for the Grange Fair, so. There's the Nuri Church, uh, um, is one of the institutions of the town. And we have the Crosby Place, Red House, uh, probably one of the most famous houses in Nuri because of Ruth Crosby's two books that uh, developed out of this uh, house uh, and, and other surrounding areas. Now owned by the Whites. And here's Jay Howell and his wife, Daisy Crosby. And here they are. I don't think this is a Nuri, but uh, here's some of the Crosby girls and uh, the mother. And uh, look toward Pebble Mountain. Lots of 
cleared land you can see. This is from Ruth Crosby's album and supposedly it's up behind the Lock Mountain House looking across the Sunday River Valley. So Mount Will would be on the right and then you're looking over and, and Puzzle is right there in the, in the left, in the background. We don't know where this is. It says Newry on the slide, and we must have got it from somebody. Anybody have any idea when, what this building is or where it is? It's one of those mysteries. It probably gives people something to think about a little bit. Have you ever, anybody ever seen this building before? Anybody know anything about it? Okay, well, we'll one of those mysteries then. We'll see. Tell us about this one, Randy. This is a salt box shaped house. There were two of these in the area. There was one in East Bethel, and this one stood at the foot of the hill at the letter S. And if you're going up the Sunday River Road and you look on the right hand side when the leaves are off the trees, you can see part of the house foundation. Of course, the, it's washed out a lot over the years, but this was a pretty good uh, sized house. There was a barn down below, and this is from Martha Wilkins' uh, photo album. And it's, it's been gone, I think, since the 30s. Romeo Baker's house was a foster house before that. Kendall? Now this is the Kendall house. This is on the Sunday River Road and and after Martha Wilkins uh, and she was the lady that wrote Sunday River Sketches, after her grandparents home burned up in Riley, she used to come back and stay with the Kendalls and uh, this is just a short ways up on the right hand side uh, beyond the Sunday River schoolhouse and the house has been split apart. The Nowlands once lived in this front part that you see on the left mm -hmm. and the back part was pulled away and it's the next house going toward Harrington's as you go up the road. Yeah. <laughs> White camps. Yeah. President W. D. Kilgore. You said North Nury, right? North Nury, yeah. These are the falls. Something about that. Yeah, this is the this is the natural dam. I think Stan has a slide in here without the dam <coughs> located there. This is just above uh, what Poplar Tavern. Yeah. Is that, On, is that the swimming hole, the deep hole? Right, the deep hole. Yeah. Yeah, and this is back. The mill was was over on the right some more. This is another building up by the road. Yeah, it says Kilgore's Dam on Bear River down at the bottom. But it's an interesting location where this ledge comes out from the right and forms a natural dam and it was just filled in on the left with these logs. Eagle Rock. Tell us about that. What's what's what how what, anything about that you know? That's Eagle Rock. Yeah, what what's what, what how did it develop? What's what's how to get that way, huh? You know, Bill? I don't know what uh, that one? That's uh J A H is Hibbert. Uh, and I can't tell you. Wasn't that, that a gravestone type? That that was Fiber. right up where they're building the bridge now. Just in the woods from that bridge. So yeah. Well, yeah, this side. Now it's well, on the right side of the road, they had to blast it out. They saved it when they flooded the road. How far does it go back, Owen? You know. Uh, 1828. That's the date, right? <laughs> I can't see it. Yet. Is that is that is that is, is that the real date though? Is that a real date or is it just something put down? Did someone put down? No, I think that's the real date. That's the real date. Okay. Eighteen eighty-one. Eighteen eighty-one. Here's a magnificent view of the Sunday River Valley. I mean the uh, North Nori Valley, looking toward uh, Speck, right? It was taken by Don Brown. Right? Don yeah. Brown. That's right. And his father. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was Speck on the left, and but Bill and Sylvia's house on the right. Yeah, and then that's what the head of, head of the Tide Cemetery. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Great, great photograph, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now this is where we get into a little bit of, uh, of uh, I think this is uh, the Davis uh, farm. Uh, is that right, Norm? It's, any idea? So it says, I think it's Davis. Like, let me just pick up the slide here a minute. Let me go ahead. Let me go back one and pick up the slide see if I can say it, what it says on it. Uh, I was, uh, it says, um, Robert Davis Place, Nuri. So that's what, uh, so we think it's there. So, so the barns, the barns look right there. Yeah. yeah. That's the state. I can't remember that's the state. It's a winter state. It's a winter stage. Charles Davis had a stage. Charles Davis had the stage, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Here's another one. I got the. Anybody know this one? I. It's the stage, I think. Let's see uh, if I can uh, go back and get this one out. So, hope somebody would know these things. But uh, this one is supposedly Jim Lane's springboard somewhere in Newry. So, so I'll put it back in. Anybody know where that house is? Anybody recognize that? Oh, if this is uh, something like that, that might have been Kilgore uh, March Turn, not Kilgore Place. Cause okay. Possibility, but I don't know the house. If it is, it's just the end of the house because there was a big set of buildings there. Okay. Possible. Here's the uh, uh, Nuri Corner covered bridge across the Bear River. And this farm, do you remember what this one was, Randy? It said, it said Williamson. Sorry. Williamson, yeah. Okay, the Williamson farm. Which was where? So, uh, it was near near the okay. Red House. It was in that vicinity. I, I think it was it was the next one up from the Red House on on the on the access road right. to the ski area. Yeah. Jeff Brown. Right. Oh. And this is the Benjamin Russell House. This was on this was just off the Monkey Brook Road, and the house. Was started like in 1800. It was one of the oldest houses in the valley. It's no longer standing. But Benjamin Russell was an early settler, son of the son of the first town clerk in Bethel. He's the one that found that uh, mother load of what was it? Uh, uh, lead. Lead. He yeah, put lead. threw his axe and yeah. it went into the lead. Yeah, never could go back to it again. And no one ever yeah. discovered it again. Been in Grafton, I don't know where it was. But he was one that did it though. <laughs> <laughs> It was the, the uh, Sunday River Schoolhouse, Lower Sunday River Schoolhouse, and interior shots of the schoolhouse. And then, of course, Poplar Tap. to after a while, so, so to speak. This is the building that burned uh, about 10 years ago, was it? Uh, about 10. 10 years ago? Yeah. When was that built, Stephen, you know? Uh, Randy? Well, it was, it was something there in the 1840s. It's a map that we've seen of Oxford County, and there was some kind of a stage stop. So there was some kind of a building there in the 40s, and it looked pretty much like this by 1861. We've got a sketch of it. 
and this was the oldest part of the building, and, and so at least this part by the Civil War was standing the way it looks. Whereabouts exactly is it? Oh, there's some of us here who have Just beyond done. the branch road, if you know where the branch road goes off, it's in the big curve. The yeah, the curve yeah, yeah, the 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 above the church. Right, right on Route 26. And then there's a TN trailer thing off the side of the road. And this is that same location. This is what the natural dam looks like without the dam there and without the mill. So you can see how deep that pond would be once it's filled in on the left. Route 26 would be up on the right, up where that, where that uh, lumber is. Now we have several views of the 1980 celebration. We won't go too slowly here. We'll just go through these. And if you want me to stop anything, we'll stop me, but uh, there's some photographs of some of that, uh, those activities. Does that say Bamper? Steve and Helen. Steve and Helen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a little different, doesn't he, Peggy? <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Who are the people down below? Who are the people down below? Anybody know who the people are down below? No? There's Randy over in the uh, yeah. 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 With dark glasses. Truck with Dr. and Mrs. Mason making their appearance, you say. So. <laughs> and this is a fire at Paul White's, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 1967. Where's that? Mark White. Here is the wonderful Hastings buildings at uh, Jury Corner. Everyone remembers that as a landmark. Yeah. Another view of Jury Corner. This is Route 2 looking toward Hanover. And the, the old store and grain hall is on the right, and then you can see the church in the distance. Quite a change. This is the other side of the Hastings farm on the left. And they had a telephone there. Did a sign out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine a grassy patch right in the middle of Route 2. Though. <laughs> you wouldn't want to stand there today. It's probably smoother than it is now. <laughs> this, this is labeled as the Ryerson uh, place. Is this where Bear River Cabins was built? Isn't that where the Ryerson place stood? It was a hotel. It was a private private home residence, and then it was a hotel at one time. I think we've got a photograph in the exhibit that shows, looking from Hanover to Ordinary Corner, and it shows this Ryerson house right there at the right there at the intersection. Like by the tea room in. Right. <laughs> and I think this burned, and then the tea room was built on the site. Really? It was called the tea room. Afterwards, yeah, Bear River Tea House. It was called. Uh -huh. And this is the Ryerson place. This is this is the same place. And this was right at Nuri Corner. Yeah. 
can remember what that is. No, we have no idea. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Anybody know? No, I don't know. Let me see if I can find out where he is. Let's see who he is. Ralph Frost. Yeah, that's uh, Logan French. And uh, little Gracie Lane. Yeah. Where is that on? So this is Ralph Frost at the uh, on his mowing machine. So. Yeah. Uh, Ralph Frost has died in World War One. Was, was uh, Mrs. Logan French. So. Okay. And this place, Randy. Early. 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 Okay. The photograph says after the second story was added. Yeah. Which may explain why the windows on the front don't line up with the windows downstairs. <laughs> that it was a it was a second a new second story. That's where the frost was. Okay. Now we're going to see 55, 150 years of Nuri. <coughs> Two people, Owen. Huh? Who are these two people? That's my grandfather on the left, Long White. Long White, okay. Walked up Long Morton. Yeah. And Long. Morton, okay. Okay. Gene Thurl, yeah. 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 One of the great characters. There's another couple more yes. characters, uh, Bill and Martha Gorman. Who's the man on the on the right, though? Do you, you know who he is? The so Gormans are the two on the on the left hand side, and this other man I don't know. He looks familiar, though. <laughs> Ready? 
mean, th this is the other side of the Kendall House. Uh, and Martha Wilkins is on the right, and the various members of the, uh, the Aldrich and the Kendall family. Okay. Yes, the moving of Bear of a Grange, you see. Oh my goodness. We have a, we have a 16 millimeter film upstairs of uh, the Grange being moved. Nuri water on the road. <laughs> wow. It said when they left all the dishes and the cupboards and everything and just moved it up without taking anything down. Top of Grand Brook. Grand Brook, you know one? Huh? Oh, top of the Grand Brook. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Here's White Brook Camps. Advertisement for that. Fred White. You know him, don't you, Owen? I've heard of him. <laughs> And of course, an early view of Sunday oh River Speedway. <laughs> and a little bit later, it looked like this, as you can see. And this is probably an old picture because it's much changed much in this. I think that completes our slot. Okay. <laughs> Not maybe that I like it the best, but 
It's the biggest thing that's happened. Okay, we have any other big, big changes you think? Probably the the hotel being gone. Yeah. Oh, the tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are very few vines left in Norway, just like there is almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. So those are the three changes you think that pretty dramatic? I would think so. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Steve, how long you lived in Nuri and, uh, and uh, going on 20 years. 20 years, okay. And the significant changes that I've seen in those 20 years are, of course, the development of the ski way. Right. And also um, the fire department. When I moved here, our Velcro took care of Nuri, and uh, since then we have our own fire department. Mm -hmm. and, Another big change was the uh, solid waste, the regional regionalization of the three towns and the solid waste. Hanover, Bethel, and Nuri. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Norm, how long have you lived in Nuri? 67 years. 67 years, okay. 67. 67, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your three big changes? A few of you, obviously. Yep. I'm sure most of us would agree. Yep. I think one of the changes I see in town from when I was a kid is. Nobody found anymore. Very little. Mm -hmm. On the one. Well, yeah, pretty much down the one. Yeah. Particularly on my river. Yeah. Another night is increased development. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you, Joanne? I'd agree that the ski way is number one. Well, well, I'll, I'll talk to you now. How long have you lived in Norway? <coughs> You're going to have that first, um, you see. I'm 64 minus 20. Minus 20. Years. 24 years. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Basically all my life. Yeah, that's right. I was there anyway, all yeah. the time. And I, I felt the ski way was the biggest change. And I'm just hearing people talk, I just happened to think of the uh, the dirt road going to tar mm -hmm. back you know, when I was a kid. That was yeah. a big thing. Yeah. And um, <coughs> one of the saddest things, I think, as far as change is your neighbors. It used to be you knew all your neighbors and now you can walk walking down the river and there are not very many neighbors left that were originally there. It yeah, starts being yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. new people in. They're a town of strangers, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank? Uh, I've been here uh, 33 years coming from Bethel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a kid, I think the biggest change I started to see in the, in the mid-70s was the advent of clear cut. Mm -hmm. yeah. Skitters became the rule of thumb. Excavators started to become, they could build bigger and better roads, and uh, uh, that was certainly going on around me quite a bit as a kid. I remember quite vividly. And uh, and the second one, of course, I think in the mid 80s was the uh, condo project that began at Sunday River, and uh, that started to bring people here, but not necessarily a lot of single family homes. And in the last 10 years, I think it's now more single family homes. And condos have kind of pulled back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, to me, those are the the three phases that stick out in my mind. That's good. Mm -hmm. And David? Uh, 70 years. 70 years, okay. As of this year. And, uh, but uh, the ski way uh, was definitely a uh, change from dirt roads to uh, paved roads. Also, uh, when we got power, I was about five years old. But, uh, Kerosene lamp wasn't quite as expensive as that. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And, uh, the, uh, those used to be the only, uh, the last uh, residence on the road there for quite a few years, but now there's quite a lot of residents above. graduation, 10 more years after three years in Hartford, Connecticut. And she said the three changes she noticed was NTL people taking over the swimming hole, 
<laughs> Starting in the Sunday River Skateway, and uh, the Sunday River Schoolhouse closed. Those are the three things that she, uh, when she was in the <coughs> bus developed. So those are the things she thought were outstanding changes. Of, you know, so. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Name three Nuri people who stand out in your mind as memorable and or remarkable. We'll start at the other end of the table. David, you have three people who are memorable or remarkable. And some reasons why they were. Joe Roderick was uh, quite memorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. okay. Especially when I got into Google. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Joe Roderick was the long time physical education teacher, but he's also one of those teachers you always remember, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, Roy Bennett uh, was uh, quite memorable because he used to make the roads somewhere near passable until we got better equipment and then he could get over it. Yeah. Okay. sitting beside the barn door and when I get ready to eat lunch or whatever and I was running tractor, he'd always say, come on over and sit in the shade and he'll carry on with some interesting stories of way back when, good and bad. Oh, yeah. All, yeah. Kinds <laughs> good. All kinds of times. Good. Great. Uh, the second one that sticks out in my mind, uh, Arthur Gochi, the beer of a cabin. Okay. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, he... Uh, he was the type of guy that when you, when you stopped in for gas, you just didn't pay and run like you do at the gas station today. You went in and you had a can of soda and there was always two or three chairs right by the door and you always sat down and had a little life lesson while you, while you sat there and had your soda. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, he, he tried to keep us as straight as he could. Um, the third, I think it's, it's kind of a pair, it was Mary and Bob Tripp and my uh, my recollections is when I had to ride the school bus, I had to uh, get to Route 26 because the bus would not come up the branch road. There was a bridge that they wouldn't cross. And a lot of times when my father went to work, he would leave me at the, the end of the road to pick up the school bus. And there'd be some days it would be snowing and I'd stand there for 45 minutes and finally discover the bus isn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I would walk to Mary's house and call my mother and she'd come down and pick me up. And uh, I remember going into the house many a time, and of course, Bob was an avid hunter. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and there'd always be a mound of two deer heads and horns in the house. And, and uh, on the wall, it was a gun rack. And half a dozen guns on the, on the rack, and there's a big sign beside them that say, Caution, loaded. <laughs> <laughs> so as a teenage kid, I said, I don't think I'm going to bother Bob too much. <laughs> The other side note about Mary is back then when you needed to get your car registered, you just went down to Mary's house on a Sunday afternoon and you got your car registered because she was the town clerk. The hours were whatever. 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 That's good. That's good. That's great. Great. Thanks. Uh, Joanne? Well, number one was Dad, Joe Roger. Um, I, just, uh, I guess just because he's my dad and he's taught me a lot. You know, while I was there, because everybody knew him. Um, and another family would be David's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Cleet. I, you know, I'm, 
I'm thinking way, way back yeah, when yeah, I was like five yeah, or yeah, so. I really yeah. remember them as, as great neighbors. And uh, as I was thinking about this, I was just thinking of how time has changed so much because uh, his father had a cleft uh, a foot. No, I mean a uh, club of foot. And I can remember, you know, um, I was just fascinated by that. You know, I couldn't, to see him walk, the way he walked. I'm thinking of how times have changed because I had a granddaughter that was born with a club foot, which was changed right off oh, yeah. in six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And now I have a great grandchild coming, and they already know she has two club feet, and she isn't even born yet. And you know how times have changed oh, yeah. that, you know, over the course of six years. Yeah. And stuff. But, uh, really nice family. You could always depend upon them. Chickens running around in the yard, and yeah, you know, the cow, the horse. And we took our goat up one time. They babysat our goat because we had to go over and see my grandparents in Bangor area. And we came back, and his mother was all upset because the horse had bitten half the goat's ear off. <laughs> but she treated it with a bag. <laughs> And another one, I don't know if you consider, I consider him Sunny River, and that's Benton Swan. I realize he lives on the main, yeah. on the uh, Bethel, uh, yeah. Bethel line, yeah. but to me, he's Sunny River. Yeah. And he was just a great character. Um, okay. Wonderful man. Great, great, thanks. Okay, uh, go on. Well, <coughs> I guess the first one that might come to my mind is, is, is Long White, mm -hmm. who was prominent in politics in Nury. He also drove the school bus when I was a kid, going to school. Uh, another one would be, uh, oh, let's see, maybe uh, Wade Robertson, who was a local farmer. Some of his things that he did in town, I remember him being a farmer. I remember going there as a kid. He was an unmarried gentleman until quite late in life. around there, but I can remember Charlie was one of the last, uh, Henry was one of the last uh, teamsters that I remember that I actually knew that that's what he did for a living. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I believe Betsy taught school, is that right, Owen? And she used to try to interest me in books and things. Good, good. Okay. So, yeah. Being here only 20 years, I don't know all these yep, <laughs> yep, yep, things yep, yep. but. Uh, the first one that came to my mind was Mary Tripp, and of course I met her because we purchased her property. And uh, Mary uh, knew a lot about history uh, in Newry and was always eager to share it with you. And I always thought it was a shame that she didn't write it down and uh, it's passed. And the next one that comes to mind uh, is still with us, and that's Bill White. Uh, he was a selectman when I was at the town office, and uh, Bill has a wealth of knowledge, and I spent one of the most wonderful days of my life with him. He took me all up through Newry and Grafton and showed me where all the old, this building was and that building, <laughs> and I'll never forget it. And uh, he was always there for me. Uh, if I needed something, I could always call Bill White, and he would be there. And the other one is the wonderful Steve White. <laughs> um, I always told him I want to be just like him when I grow up. <laughs> and, uh, after a while I thought, well, maybe I don't want to grow up. <laughs> but Steve, Steve is a great person, has a lot of knowledge, and uh, certainly does a fabulous job running the town. mentioned my aunt Carrie White. Uh, she 
pushed most every kid in town into doing as much as they could for education, in their education, getting them, themselves educated. She was, uh, she uh, <coughs> taught at uh, Gould Academy. She uh, taught at Machias Normal School. And she was involved with Gorham, with now Gorham School down there. And, and uh, she also was superintendent of the schools until I think the last year was the year that I graduated from grammar school. <laughs> way six, I think she yeah. did. So. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and uh, I think the mother one is. Bob Davis. He uh, sort of uh, hid his uh, knowledge and everything under a bushel. He, he didn't uh, spread it around as much, but he was no way He was a very, very smart man. I think he was valedictorian of his class in school. Postmaster for a yes. good many years. I can remember when he was first postmaster. Another thing, he had the same birth date as I did. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same year, but the same month and day. And I can remember going down to with, uh, to Bob and Bertha's little camp when it was down uh, uh, on this side of where Mercy was lived, there on the other side of the road. Uh, and he was, uh, he and Bertha were probably from their grandfather and grandmother to my, my children, because we were there so much and so on. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you pick this one. You'll have to if you don't want to. I guess I'll. Okay, that's all right. Okay. I wanted to uh, read uh, Jane Young's uh, picks. She said Jim Reynolds and his fox found. She found that fascinating. Jean Thurl, uh, the character with the long beard, and, and uh, I can remember hearing uh, Jane's sister, Frances Gunther, telling us about him, and uh, he was quite a character. Uh, but uh, he was very patient with the children, she, 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 she says. Yeah, so. She rem remarked about yeah, how patient he was with the children. And her third person was Julia Fleet for her knowledge of nature and the, of the plants and animals and birds of the air. So Julia Fleet gets a vote from James. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, how has your life been influenced by living in Newry? Now we'll start up there with uh, David. How do you want to give us how, how has your life been influenced by living in Newry? Anything special about it? Well, it was a great slow start. It's made up since then. Being an only child, and uh, most of the time, the next nearest children was the now ones, it was two and a half miles away, and transportation wasn't much back then, so I uh, learned to entertain myself in the woods uh, with a fish pole, and as soon as I could get away with carrying a gun, I, I took to that. And then somewhere along the way, I came up with a bicycle, and that was a big improvement because I could go visit people. Yeah. And, Nowadays, I would bear a ride of us down the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, that gives you, that's pretty good. I think that's, uh, Frank, you have anything? I, I do agree with David a little bit. I, growing up on the ranch, road, there wasn't any kids near me. In fact, uh, probably Owen's kids were the closest that I jumped with, and they were four miles away. And I kind of had to improvise on my own growing up. That, I went fishing in the brooks and went bird hunting and got a bicycle and I could get up to Owen's house to, to hang out with his boys and, uh, and uh, 
I thought when I got old enough to get a license that I could go somewhere and have all where all the action is. Well, now I can't wait to get home at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoy coming back. Oh, that's right. That's good. That's good. Well, I'm similar to David. I was an only child, so I basically had to find my own entertainment. Uh, but my, my dad really taught me a lot, uh, particularly the love of nature and, you know, the flowers, the birds, and trapping as a young girl. I, I started um, shooting a gun at uh, five years old, shooting chipmunks. <laughs> so I started out and continued on. Um, but, um, I, I just love, love Sunday River Valley. I love it. No, I'm another one of those only children. <laughs> 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 and, uh, more or less, I had to find my own entertainment. Uh, what I remember more, my dad was, as has been mentioned, a postmaster, but he was also a farmer. And because I can remember things I remember. There's several things I can remember when I was a kid, and like in hay and, and things like that. But I, I remember at the time I used to enjoy berry picking and things like that when I was growing up. And I guess one of the other things about, maybe it hadn't run the right place to bring it up, but the thing I noticed when I remember when I was a kid, it was quiet. You could go outdoors in the evening, you know, and you could hear the owl hoot to the bear home. No coyotes in it. And uh, things like that. And now it's almost impossible. There's always some noise going on. Well, that's kind of a tough question. We are hungry, and we both, Don and I, um, we like to go hiking every day. We hike up the mountain two or three miles. And, you know, look for animal tracks and stuff like that. We like the peace and quiet, and believe me, it's a lot more peace and quiet than southern Maine. <laughs> you know? So we, we enjoy that. You should have been here Good. 50 years. <laughs> That's right. Owen? Well, kind of hard to remember. I think uh, one room schoolhouse. And, uh, I think there was one year at the branch school that we had 30-some kids and one teacher, all of eight grades. And the last year that I was there in eighth grade, I think there was eight kids in eight. The eight grades were there, but there wasn't one in all the grades. Uh, I think uh, traveling on the road bicycle or with a, we used to cut hay clear down to the, well, Kilgore place, clear down to where the turn, much turn used to be at the end of the, below Roy Bennett's there, and uh, driving a hay rack up the road, you probably didn't get half a dozen cars to buy your road in a mile and a half, two miles, uh, which was pleasant. <laughs> in some ways, but I don't know if we would uh, need to drop back that fast <laughs> to make us happy. Uh, there's many other things that I can't think of. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do something different now. This, this next uh, several questions, uh, we just open it up and anybody who wants to do want to go with a roll call, we can just go and see if anybody has any comments about it. What do you believe? Oh, I mean, let me do it. I got to do uh, Jane's. Uh, uh, she said, a wonderful place for children to grow up in the 1930s and 1940s. A safe place at that time. A good um, base from which to venture forth with good standards to live by and an amazing understanding of life in general. So that's what Mary did for her. So, so. Okay, now the next question, number four. Um, <coughs> What do you believe has been the most important development in Norway in the past 50 years, and how has it affected your life? Probably most people are going to say the speedway, actually. I, I just want to see if anybody has anything different than that. <coughs> just see if anybody has anything different. Anybody has anything different? The speedway has probably been the most. Um, let's move on then to the next one, and then we come back to that one if we 
Do you have any favorite story relating to memories past? I think this is one we need to have, see if anybody has any favorite story. Uh, David, do you have a good story about Murray? Well, I don't know one of the good ones. You were showing a picture of the covered bridge there back uh, when it was used. Yeah. And of course, as I got to be around 15, I got a driver's license. And uh, the quality of cars was quite limited, which I had. Used. And I remember distinctly one day heading home and uh, of course the road that came in on the south end of the bridge there came down like that and turned in. And uh, it was a little slippery that day. And I pulled into the bridge, of course being a teenager, not quite as slow as I should have been. And there was three guys scrambling to beat hell up from under a barricade and heading for the sides of the bridge. And they were putting chains on the barricade and they the bridge, and it wasn't too obvious to us. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, there was brakes enough on the car, so I did not hit theirs. But, I uh, that's right. It was quite a scramble. <laughs> it was the Reynolds boys. At the I see. <laughs> My, uh, in the early mid twenties, my my grandfather Dan Forbes worked for Fred White, Owen's father, working in the woods, and my grandmother taught at Power Schoolhouse and lived at Bessie Leonard's down across from the town office, and uh, they got introduced at a I think at a dance somewhere up near where Bill lives. There may have been a dance hall. Maybe Owen can the one up on the probably the one up on the branch. But it might have been. And anyhow, they. Decided to go, they went to dances every Saturday night, and on the branch at the dance hall, there happened to be a, a dancing contest, and uh, well, they entered into it, and they won a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, I don't think the dog could stay at Bessie's house, nor could it stay at Fred's, and so they had to give the dog away. So, <laughs> that, that story I've heard a million times from my grandmother. <laughs> Well, my story, I guess, would be just uh, my family, my my mom and dad, and uh, we had a goat and a Boston Terrier. My dad decided we were going to go on a camping trip up and catch them. We had an old Jeep back then, so the animals went along, right along with us. It was up where the dam was up in there. What we did was we got up there and um, we built a lean-to. And took all the boughs to make for a mattress where we lay. Dad and I built a raft to put out in the water. And we're actually up there, we're catching fish, but also catching frogs. We were eating frogs' legs at that time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and during the night, there was uh, a bobcat. We heard, you know, we had that goat right with us and everything. I remember a little more <laughs> Okay, Well, I think perhaps my story would be an early unsolved mystery. Yeah. <laughs> a man, what, about 27 or 8 on, you know? 28. 28. An elderly man wanted to go off his home for a kill goal. He's never been found. And all kinds of theories of what happened, right? Right. So. Okay. And it always, that's always been something that I've wondered about, you know? <laughs> Really? Okay, uh, Sylvia, any special story? story? It's just about the uh, family. My husband was a game warden over 42 years, and he had a call that there was a male duck frozen, starting to freeze in the water. So he went and he got it and brought it home. And we had a Chesapeake retriever at the time. And uh, the dog, the duck did not like the dog. He hissed at it. And, tried to flop its wings at him and all of that. Well, it didn't take long before the duck fell madly in love with the dog. And <laughs> he used to sleep on him, and <laughs> the dog went in the pond swimming, and the duck would get on his back and run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah,
late afternoon. It was after dark while we was up looking for him in the back of his house on the side hill there. I can remember being up there with a flashlight looking around on the trees and hoping I wouldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't. <laughs> Let's move on then to, uh, do you have a, I'm going to put this out to general, if anybody doesn't have one, that's okay. Do you have a favorite spot in Murray that you believe is special for a number of reasons? If so, please share it with the audience. Do you have any, anybody have a special spot in Murray they like? A home, you'd have to be. A home, okay. <laughs> where you live is where, um, where you live is where you think a special spot? I think it's special. Okay. <coughs> Joanne, you have? Uh, yeah, I have to say, you know, I have two or three spots, but probably, the one that I used the most would be the ledges, which is right on my road. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I just grew up going there. We, when Dad even taught at school, we always went down there and cooked our supper. You know, we had a campfire, we cooked our supper, swam. Um, we had covered bridge camp, took all the kids there. And I've taken all my grandchildren there. Mm -hmm. And even now, it, it's a nice place to go if you want some still time. You hear the water, you know. Right. right. Very, very peaceful. Anybody else got a favorite spot? <coughs> David, you have a favorite spot? The pool, up to uh, what's called Ladder Ass. It's, uh, <coughs> it's uh, favorite for me because it was within reach most of the time. Back then, it used to be some fish in it. Mm -hmm. um, Still is. I, 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 just, I was swimming there this summer. I saw people catch some good-sized trout there, so. Mm. so that's good. I guess my age is telling them. That. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to swim there quite a lot. Still a wonderful place to swim. Yeah, so far. Yes. Anybody else, Frank? The, uh, I don't know, my favorite spot was always the swimming hole above uh, Poplar Tavern. And uh, it, uh, Seemed like on a hot summer afternoon, you'd call some of your friends or even Owen's boys or a few others around and we'd all get on our bicycles and we'd meet there and go swimming for the afternoon and we were the only ones there. Is that what they call deep holes? Deep holes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, okay. And under the falls, there's a little hole under the falls and you could stand on a flat rock at the base of the falls if the water wasn't going too fast and you could stick your hand in there and pull out four or five little minnows about three inches long so we'd do that to scare the girls a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time. Anybody else got a favorite spot? Well, I have several favorite spots. When Don and I walk um, on our property, um, there are two or three nice swimming places, and there's one place where you can swim right under the ledges. And, oh, yeah. yeah. So, what is that favorite spot? I think probably sitting on my back deck. Okay, let's move on then to the um um how did I have a picture of Jane said what Jane said she had a favorite spot. Um uh, let's see. What is she gonna spend her spot? Covered bridge, that was her favorite spot, so I'll have some. Okay, How do you think the character of the town has changed through the years? Anybody want to deal with that one, number seven? How do you think the character changed? We've said, said something about it. Anybody got any other special comments they want to make about how the characters changed? Anybody want to go for that one? Well, there's certainly more um, second homes and the seasonal population. Yep. Um, and my uh, working with the town, uh, we went from Two shot days a week to full time. Yeah. That's you get points out on that for me. When I was when I was young growing up, particularly during World War II, there was much more agriculture in town. And practically none now. There's one full time hay hand beef farmer. And I guess the other thing I mentioned is very few people raise a vegetable. Anybody else got any, how the town's changed? David, you got any ideas? 
so many uh, yeah. seasonal yeah. homes and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything? No, somebody made the comment is you really don't know all your neighbors anymore, and I guess that's yeah. what comes to mind. Exactly. I think it's not that they're bad. It's just no, no. Right. Oh, do you have any? Well, under that same thing now, when <coughs> we first two years that I went to Gould, Paul and I went back and forth, and there were two or three more that uh, rode with us by the time and so on. But when you stop and think about it, we knew every person all the way from our house, every house, we knew who lived there and everything, fair in the Bethel. Mm, yeah. And now, <laughs> I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have to second that, because that's, that's something that I had wrote when I was young. Yeah. Yeah. You knew everybody. Yeah. 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 Okay, any further on that? Let's move on. To, uh, what does Jane say? She says the town has changed fast with all the development either been built or in the process. And bear of a side of Nury is fast catching up. Restaurants, lodgings, golf courses, post office, others. So she's seeing some of the same things happening on the bear of a side as the thunder of a side. So. Just beginning. Just beginning, yeah. So, uh, so let's go to the next question. Do you have a favorite Nury building? Or structure. Anybody have anything that they should be like? A building in Norway they should be like? Um, who wants to tackle that one first? I will. Okay, you okay? The bridge. The bridge? Yeah, the bridge. That, yeah. That, yeah, that, that's that why I put it in first. Yeah, I thought that, that is, would be probably a lot of people's favorite, but there's yeah. other people have different ideas. Because um, actually, that's how we discovered our the house that I live in now. My mm -hmm. folks discovered it. We went there fishing mm -hmm. when I was five years old. Mom and I walked up the trail, it was just a trail down the road, and found that house, inquired, and my folks bought it. And since then I've learned to swim there. My dad had covered bridge camp, we used to play games in that bridge, you know, on rainy days. Um, my step-granddaughter um, has her initials in there, and the bridge means a lot to her. My granddaughter was proposed in the bridge oh, and was married in the bridge. <laughs> and also, my good neighbor, Lina Reynolds, had a funeral in the bridge. So it has, it has a lot of memories. A lot of memories. And you wouldn't believe the people that come and take pictures of that bridge. I mean, oh, yeah. the as to what it was, and now it's nothing. Yep. To look at the photos of the tennis courts, the gazebo, yep. you know, yep. the, the yep. swinging bridge, yep. and there's all those buildings. Yep. Yep. It was in nowhere. Yep. You know? yep. it, was, it must have been an adventure a hundred years ago to go there. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see it all in the It'd be a nice thing too, wouldn't it? Well, I think maybe the gazebo, I think, is still standing. Well, it is. Yeah, it's it's standing, but really, really it's close. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you want to get close to it. I don't know where. It was, st it was standing as of two years ago. It was over there two years ago, and it was still standing. I can, you can walk on it, but it's pretty well rotted out. It was last winter, I think. You can still see it from the road. Yeah. I think my favorite building would probably have been the Bear of a Great Show. Mm -hmm. Is that, uh, well, of course, I hope it belonged to Grange, and I probably went to Grange from when I had to stay downstairs and listen to him talk upstairs. <laughs> and then there's the time went along, there was dances in the Grange Hall, uh, there was dances every, for a while, back in the 50s, it was every Friday night or Saturday night or something, there was dances, uh, young people in it, and uh, the big dance and so on was the sugar eats in the spring, and you could, uh, the upstairs hall would be so full that uh, 
they'd be out on the floor probably a third of the way along and they'd have the contra dancers and there wasn't much. They'd have two lines of them and there still wasn't very much room to travel back and forth. I think there's a few people there that probably went to sugar eat and so on. Uh, I, I, Jane says, uh, every spring there was a dance at the Grange Hall at Mary Connor. It was the sugar eat. The orchestra, if you could call it that, was Mr. Lon White and his wife Susan. Uh, she played the piano and he played the fiddle. This, this dance was very well, uh, very much enjoyed and very well attended and, looked, and everyone looked forward to it after a cold winter. At intermission time, our refreshment was maple syrup, cooked so that, uh, that pouring it on fresh snow, it turned into candy soft and gooey. So that's what she said. Wax. Wax, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was her, her recollection. Uh, anybody else got any other place they'd like to go? We're building it in, so. Okay. Okay. I want to go back to Favorite Spot for just a moment. Okay, yeah, Favorite Spot. I think probably being the Jackie Dialog and thing. I spent quite a few pleasant afternoons at the Nerd Yeah. Okay. Don't beat home. No. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. We've, uh, based on the past, uh, how do you think the future, Nidneri's future will be? How will it change in the future? Anybody got any ideas on that? Uh, David, anything you've got to say about that? Well, the way it's going this year, it's a bit scary. <laughs> in New Hampshire, as you drive along the road, you'll look up at them. They won't be hidden anymore like they have been. Yeah. They'll be going up. Other comments about the future? Well, I think there's one person that's got lots for sale. If they'd all do the same thing, it would help a lot, but we can't do it because that's Stewart's lots up across from uh, this side of the bill house there. Is there an advocate for 100 acre zoning? Yeah. 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 Maybe we can open this to the audience. Anybody have any questions for the panel? <coughs> yes, Mary? Yes, I have a question. When, when Andover West Surplus became part of Newry, uh, Newry provided a school and set aside land for a cemetery, and they were both named Heather High. And I'd like to know where that name came from. I've been wondering that for years. <laughs> I don't think that there's anybody that knows. <laughs> I have never heard of anybody. I thought I would just throw it out in case anybody does. <laughs> they, there's no question about it. North Nori or the upper end of Nori is as far as the tide went. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's not tide, then it's just hard as water. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, other questions from the panel? Uh, other comments? Uh, yes. Yeah. Go. I, I, when I was driving over to Volt the other day, the first time I'd ever thought about it was I turned off of Route 26 on the Bear River Road. I was wondering when that road was paved. 
How many years ago? <laughs> 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 Three years. Yeah. 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 Well, I say, you know, when, when was it? When did it become a go from a dirt road to a paved? I road? kind of remember being there, and I remember doing uh, mid forties. Yeah. I think Warren told me that section by my home, you know, where I live, above the town office. There. That was the worst. He got, that was built in uh, 1927, I think he told me. Yeah. And you know, there has been that a section through that that there's never been any major building on since that time. All they've done is spread a little more tire on it, lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Speaking about the road now, just below my house, in one place just above it, there's still a couple of years. At times, there's car dirt stick through the tire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I put a mailbox in there, and the uh, gravel section in the edge of the road. I would assume the road is similar, it's about four or five inches, and then you go right into a what? Bloom. That's why the edges of the road are always dropping down. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? Um, being young, uh, I guess probably foolish, but um, Mert's Turn, how did that get its name? Mert Kilgore. Mert Kilgore. Mert, okay. So and that was a, it was a big house there, and that was the stage stop from the with the horse and buggy and the stage that went from Bethel to Errol, New Hampshire. Yeah. Other, other I, I've got a question. Uh, when they were building the Jordan Grand Hotel, someone called me up and wanted to know how did the Monkey Brook Road get its name? Who knows how it got its name? Must have been the Monkey Brook. <laughs> but was it always called Monkey Brook? Has it always been that, as far back as you can remember? The Brook was, uh, the road used to be, uh, I believe it was a Little Hale mm -hmm. road. But somebody named it Long with the Brook. Other questions? Yes. Um, there, there's a little red um, farmhouse that my mother told me was called the Town Farm, and I was wondering if anybody knew anything else about that. Was well, Town Farm right? Well, well, it's well, I, just, farm I don't know place. what more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Town Farm. Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know. When did it stop? Twenties uh, uh, or so? Of the I, I would think it was along about then. But this, yeah. the Town Farm, probably you don't realize that that was the place that people that weren't able to take care of themselves were boarded out from the town to care of them. And like, just like the one that was by the dump there. Was by the dump there, yeah. Joe Merrill place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think every town had them. Bethel was the last town in the main that's closed the town farm, 1979. So you see how long it took us to get out of town farm. When did it close? 1979. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you want to talk about Eric White has some photographs he wants to talk to a little bit about, so we'll get the floor to Eric in a minute. Thank you, Stan. Okay. I guess I was, I was well, very fortunate. I had two grandfathers and two great grandfathers that came from Dury. So over the years, we've accumulated quite a lot of old pictures and whatnot that they, they hid way, way back. Just, uh, if you drive up through Dury and up through Grafton North, probably you, you look up in the mountains and maybe it's occurred to you. If they hadn't stood so much in the state of Maine on end, Maine would be a damn big state. Because <laughs> <laughs> farming has been mentioned here, the Grange and whatnot, but um, there's even the, one of the other biggest things that went on in early, of course, was the lumber industry. Yeah. The, the mill at Popo, just about Popo Tavern. Owen's father and my grandfather had another mill up down across from where uh, Roger Hanscom lived, down on, on Bear River. And I guess there were several others on the Sunny Riverside, all of which, most of which came to the same 
ultimately and the water came up and, and the bill went down. <laughs> but this, this is a picture, actually it isn't in Nuri, it's just above Nuri, which depicts a lumber camp. Norman's father, Bob Davis, and, and my dad were good friends. In fact, they roomed together at Gould when they went there, but Bob took that picture of a lumber camp if you come up afterwards and look at it, you, you, you can almost start shivering looking at that picture. <laughs> you, you see that, that smoker, I don't know a smoker, probably steam coming out of those, those camps, but that's all speck and, and eyebrow in the background. But, um, and my, my father just cherished that. No matter where he was, that had to be hanging on the wall in the, in the living room. Um, one of the big things associated with Nori, of course, is Screw the Falls, which has been in every Down East magazine and Yankee magazine since the last 50 years, I suspect. But a picture that I'm going to show you is kind of depicts what happens when the log drive, they used to, there was a driving dam at the, up in the notch. Sometimes it didn't really, it wasn't really drainage enough to come down to get much of a pitch of water to drive wood down through. So that's what happens when things don't go all that well. The log dog down through school of the falls. If, you, if you've ever been around where people were juggling wood with pulp folks, you know there's a big headache about to happen right there. And eventually, that didn't last very long. It was just so unreasonable to consider driving wood down through Bear River that they gave it up in, I think, sometime in the 30s. I think the last the last one was in the early 40s. Early 40s, I think, the last one. This term. You're going to have to come up. We, can, we, we will uh, uh, have a so we'll the people look at it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. A, probably everyone that's been around there has seen that picture. It was of somebody that stayed at Parker Tavern, if I remember, it, that created that ship and they had a big launch and ceremony. <coughs> and the river is called the City of Nuri. Sorry, we were replica of the steamboats. Um, they talked about the place, the Kilgore place. It's the Merton Kilgore down at the bottom of uh, Blue Roy Bennett's where the, where the, makes, the road makes a sharp right hand turn. That, that was a big set of buildings. Uh, someone said it was a stage photo. <coughs> my grandmother was a young girl who was working there. She was a chambermaid or something with my grandfather who, who did that. River a couple of miles meadow. She came from Arrow. But those were all gone, but they burned years ago. But you're welcome to come up and look. Well, done. I found an old postcard addressed to my great grandfather Jacob first at Murray Corner, where he ran a store in Murray Corner. In fact, one of the pictures that we saw showed that. And this is from a wholesale dealer, Hyde and Southworth in Boston. I said, dear sir, I shall be at your place on or about right away. He <laughs> 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 must have been an eager, eager to make a sale. But that was in 1888. Uh, time to email him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how he got there. <laughs> <laughs> the from the 1880s. There's a picture of up on the side of Speck when they logged up there. That's about as steep as it gets in this country. You can imagine trying to log up on the side of Speck Mountain and they bunched the wood up and hauled it over and put it in over sluice and let it rattle down the mountain. And the father said that the a trail onto the fire tower where he worked up there was right alongside that sloop. 
He said, you want to keep your eyes open <laughs> going up the trail. Because when those logs went by, they were just a whistling. And you can see one going by right there to the end of it, up in the air. Yeah, and every so far, they put a big tree across so that when it, the end came up, it hit it and it didn't fly out. That, because they, he said they were going probably 60, 70 miles an hour and they went down the street there. <laughs> and then they went out into a field into a big pile. And I guess they don't have that picture. <clears throat> that was my grandfather, Lord White, whose house that you heard mentioned tonight here. He played the fiddle with the dancers and whatnot. I learned to play his fiddle which was left to him by an aunt whose, uh, whose husband died in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. and, uh, wow. And wow. Nice yeah. fiddle. But oddly enough, it was 50 years ago this month that that birthday. Mm -hmm. he, he was killed in an automobile accident Thanksgiving. A few days later, the house burned before we could close it down. So there's probably nobody here that knows a long way, except Rudy, maybe. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, mm -hmm. so, so, One story I heard about that mill in Bill Gibbons. Yeah. And at the time, they were, it's a birch mill. And the story I heard was that they were using birch from the local area and they were paying stumpage on it and they were paying 10 cents a card and they had to take the birch up and take one limb, one knot. <laughs> and I heard that they raised the price of the stumpage. I assume that would be IP maybe. I feel uh, yeah, I feel on the yeah. big part of Murray. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, they said, no, we can't do that anymore. We want to put the 20 cents a car and you have to take two knots and move that down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming yes. tonight and thank this panel. I let's give them a hand. <laughs> Scratch the surface of local history you never can get. You know, but at least we got some, maybe got brought some, uh, pointed out some things that maybe we want to explore further. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to know uh, the history of every town is so exciting. And I'm glad to have a real exposure to Nuri. And I hope all of you really got something out of this evening. And, and keep plugging on Nuri history and every other town's history because you never know enough. And there's always something more that's going to come up. And you'll just be surprised what's out there. So. With eBay, we never know now. So uh, let's uh, let's just adjourn now and thank you all for coming. Let's stay around for a second and talk to the panel and just have a good time.